guys, what's going on? What's cracking? Uh, you just saw me unbox these new awesome parts here. So before we get into it though, big thank you. Uh, gentlemen here, Jasmine, I, I, always, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. You know, American, English, terrible. Uh, thank you. So I want you guys to know that uh, SMS sent these, but the real gentleman to thank here is this gentleman here. This is his Instagram. I'm not sure if I should be sharing this or not. I'm not contact before this, so if you don't see it, you'll know why. Um, thank you. Like, this is going way above and beyond. He sent these as a gift. This is Christmas gift to me. So again, this is something I said he never would have to do. I would never ask anything like this from an individual, you know, not a business. So it means a lot to me. I know you guys probably times think I'm a bit mushy and stuff, but at the end of the day, no one owes me anything. So when someone does this, whether it's small or something huge like this, it all equals the same to me. It means the same to me. It just, it, it's just gratitude is all I can say is it thank you so much. Um, it means a ton to me. Um, but yeah, I'll shut up now and let's go look at the parts itself. getting the parts to this is the first time I've had anything ever shipped to me in a crate style thing so it wasn't actually in a cardboard box it came in these like wooden crates um, definitely different definitely was not used to opening that very cool kept it very safe and it was definitely fun trying to get that off as you saw in the video the one wasn't bad but the other one here the small one definitely a little bit harder so I wanted to show you guys this and I need to clarify some things too as you'll see valve cover so first let's start off with the intake manifold itself this is a six injector. He offers a 12 injector system also. Company again is SMS. I'll link his stuff up here and down below. This is set up that this drive-by wire, he comes with the adapter here. This is all bolt together too. So it's 100% CNC'd and then bolted together. There's no welding in this whatsoever. Now for this, you can get an idle air control valve and you can also get some other revisions for a uh, bolt on here. So you can actually bolt up your, um, oh shoot, a cable uh, to it. Just like you can say, the MCC loyalty, which I'll kind of go over the difference between these two also, because I'm, you guys are probably wondering, but Ryan, you use MCC, and you're right. These are great manifolds, but I'm going to discuss costs. I'm going to discuss the differences between them, so on and so forth. Again, this is using a drive-by wire 82 millimeter Bosch. It comes with the adapter. You just let him know which one you have. He supplies the O-ring also to make it really easy. He has taped it onto it, so I didn't lose it. Inside, I'm going to move this out of the way real quick. Let's set this up. If you look inside, see if it'll focus for me. Come on. You'll see it actually has uh, stacks in it also to help move the air in the correct manner. We're gonna flip it over again. Again, guys, try to keep it quiet here. As you can see, this one does not have the auto control valve, right? Because I don't need it. Now this one obviously had it and I had blocked it off then because I went drive-by wire. But on this one, it just doesn't have it all together. So this also has five ports instead of four. Uh, that extra port is nice to have in case you wanna run another vacuum port all built into the bottom um, and already in there. So these are all, I believe, eighth inch MPT because these are, yes. So they'd be all eighth inch NPT there. Five in the back or on the bottom. Again, you could probably request to put those on the top. Um, just an overall nice piece. Uh, again, let's sit this down. As it comes down, goodness gracious, I need to put a piece of cardboard under it. Uh, it's not powder coated or anodized yet, so when I do that, I'll definitely be doing that. Uh, again, for the fuel rail, this one is not anodized. Uh, he is looking into getting stuff anodized. I'm gonna find someone here in the US to do it for me because I'll be running ED5 and having something with ED5 and a raw aluminum uh, fuel rail, not a good idea, uh, in my personal opinion. So I'm gonna have it all anodized. Plus, it just looks cool. I love the fact that this is, I mean, this is like baby smooth to my hand. I mean, very, very smooth, very well done. Um, now, the only thing is, and I'm always open and honest, and I've already told him about it, and this is no great pro Tim. You guys need to understand this. Again, being shipped over, some of this stuff has residue on it, and I, if you guys get anything and has this residue, I want to explain to you what this is. This is from machining, okay? This is the coolant residue. Take some brake cleaner too, if it's raw aluminum, and it'll come right off, or just use some LA's Awesome, or just any normal cleaner, it'll come right off. It's not corrosion, it's nothing wrong with it, it is just coolant residue. Coming from the machining world, happens all the time when you let it sit, not a problem, guys, so do not freak out. 
The other small thing, and I understand why he did it, these small bolts are steel and they are corroding, now getting shipped over. Now, the reason he used these small bolts, because they're 12.9 grade, so they're super strong. When you get something this small, the threads will strip out. Even titanium is at a G5 level, our grade five level is only a grade 10. These little bolts are a grade 12.9. Same with these ones here. Now these bigger bolts on the back here are stainless steel because they have a lot more thread. Going into aluminum, so it, there's, the aluminum's gonna give out before this bigger stainless steel bolt will. Again, I'm just being open and honest with you guys and I've already talked to him about it so this is something that he can look into himself I just want to be very open with y'all um, very happy like just overall very happy the only other difference thing different thing is too is this so you're probably running why do I have a random tube now he might change this too there's three spots here this is used to bolt up you'll figure out the bolt length and then you have to cut down this tube right depending on your ejector length this is what you can adjust. So this is good for some people, bad for some others. This one comes with a predetermined length and you have to figure out your injectors. But say you already have injectors and you've already bought all that. Now you buy this and you go, crap, I need to get different injectors. But with this, this allows you to cut it and make it whatever you want. It's just a normal little piece of aluminum. And if you mess this up, you can go down to probably, honestly, you could probably go down to Home Depot, Lowe's and get this. Really, really like that. Again, super nice little piece. Billet adapter again here that is designed for the 82 millimeter, so. Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm ready to get this on the car. I uh, obviously don't have the engine here. I'm gonna do some measurements to see what the difference is with. Uh, I'm told this will fit a Mark IV Supra. It is, the width is going to fit in there. So yeah, and for me, I won't have a fuse box, so it really won't matter, but it looks like it doesn't cut over this way as far as this one did, but this one fit with the factory fuse box. So you should be good either way. Now onto the valve covers. You guys know that I work very closely with Autosport Engineering. My wife's car has Autosport Engineering billet valve covers. Uh, Yasmin was very nice to send me these. It has my logo etched into it. Um, very nice little piece. It is, honestly, it's very pretty too. Both companies are very good to me and I would just work very closely with um, Autosport and helping design stuff. So I don't want to go too great a detail, but these are nice little valve covers too. I really want to focus on the intake manifold for right now. Uh, we'll get these all sorted and bolted on at one time. Uh, but the focus is on this item right here. It's just that billet intake manifold is crazy. But what we're going to do next is get these two side by side and I'm going to start measuring. I'm not going to be able to probably show it on camera because I don't have anything to set this up high enough, but I want to start measuring and seeing the difference in widths, lengths, and try to see what the offset is to see how it's going to fit in the car without physically having the engine. All right, so let's start going over some of the differences here because I know this is going to be asked and people are gonna to wanna to know, like Ryan, what's the difference? So we're gonna do the biggest one, cost. $1,300, $525 or $550, I believe. Uh, let me take it back. This one's $550, might be a little bit more. This has velocity stacks, velocity stacks. So there's the biggest one. That's what you guys wanna know, that answers that. Now let's go over the details. Okay, let's start with the MCC, you guys have seen it before. Now this one I did opt for the adapter. This will come with a throttle body will not come with a throttle body. He'll make an adapter that will come with it for drive-by wire, but does not come with a throttle body. That is extra cost, is included. The factory one, or the one that comes with the MCC is over here. It will come like so. It come with a mount so you can put a Toyota TPS on it, or in my case, I put a GM one on it. I adapted that one on, again, for that cost, so that doesn't come with it. Both come with fuel rails, as you can see. This one here does have a center port, okay? Comes with all the brackets, hardware too. This one does not actually come to the third bracket. Then I dropped the metal piece there. Comes with the third bracket, as you can see. So this actually has three brackets to bolt on. And then comes with this. So you actually have to cut down the pedestals that you need to bolt it up to the actual runners. Why do you do that? Well, everyone's injectors are different like I was speaking on. I kind of actually like this. It's pretty easy to cut down. It's a piece of aluminum. Uh, anything, a regular hacksaw could do it. I'm gonna use a grinder and then smooth everything out, but that can easily do it, not a big deal. Um, this does not have the third return port, but if you guys know me, I always block it off anyway, so I'm glad this doesn't. It's one less thing I have to worry about leaking, so that actually makes me happy. Um, this is all welded. This is 100% bolt together. This is custom, this is, a little bit better fit and finish. Uh, again, this is handmade in the Middle East versus, you know, this is Chinese. Uh, this does come anodized, this one does not. But again, there's it's, it's all give and take. This is sheet metal, this is not. Again, this is milled out from a solid steel or a solid piece of aluminum. Uh, on the bottom here, uh, well, let's the other thing let's get into, injectors. Uh, it will fit my, I think these are 17 millimeter injectors. Don't quote me on that, I have to double check. I might have to put it up here. Uh, but it does already check that my injectors I have from Fuel Injector Clinic, both slide right in. There's no need for an aftermarket boss. It's already machined here, just like this one is machined, fits right in. Um, bottom side now, let's do that. So flip this up. 
If you see here, this already has a mount for the IDR control valve, and it has four ports. Like I talked about earlier, on the bottom of this one, it has five ports, eighth inch MPT, and this one, because it's drive-by wire, just go ahead, uh, went ahead and removed this. Now you can add it for no extra cost, so you can have an idle air control valve. Easy to add, not a problem. Can also add a burst plate if you want to. This one does not come with a burst plate. So again, I'm trying to go back and forth here, guys, and make it super easy. It is all what you want to do. This is budget friendly, budget, budget friendly. Even this is budget friendly. Realistically, $1,300 with fuel rail and everything is budget friendly. That same style intake manifold from the big names is well over 2,000, 2,500. Some are even over $3,000. So half the cost of some of the big boys. Uh, this one is just really cheap. But again, I've seen some of these break. I've seen some last forever. There's a guy drag racing making 55 PSI through one of these. No problem, hasn't cracked, hasn't had a single issue. The only thing he said he did have an issue with was the throttle body, switch it out for an RMR. Actually talking to MCC, the owner, he said he's had like two, I believe, fail in all the ones he sold and he did warranty them. So not worry about that either. Again, when you break it down, it's all on what you want to spend, how nice you want it to look. Again, I think this looks cool because it is billet, but there's nothing wrong with this. I think this looks great. Um, it's all in what you want, right? It's all in what you want. Again, this comes with every fitting, everything to put onto it, and uh, it has a predetermined injector length, so you have to be wary of that uh, and understand what you need to use. Uh, again, it will come with all the fittings on the bottom, and it will come with this block off if you do not have an idle air control valve or don't want to even use it, and you just want to use the regular um, throttle body, or you can block it off because you're gonna be using a drive-by wire. So again, this is 100% up to you guys. I'm just trying to make this a very simple and easy video to understand that there's two different intake manifolds for do two different price sets. Okay guys, so one thing that I've noticed uh, when cutting down these little pedestals, it doesn't take much. They're aluminum, it's easy. Uh, the exact length I found with FIC and most any other injectors is going to be uh, what you're gonna want is 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters is the perfect length. You can go a little bit shorter and tighter, but 50 millimeters seems to be the perfect length. Um, 50 to 48, I think mine's close there. I kept checking my caliper. Um, when you go that large, I, I feel like it's losing tolerance. I kept pushing it back down, zeroing it out to make sure. But 50 millimeters seems to be the perfect length. And that's what works to hold the injectors in. Now I don't have the middle pedestal in because again, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, you can obviously put it in if you want to. It'd be the same length, 50 millimeters. I just not running it because one less thing in the way in case I need to work on it. So any other uh, system does not have it. So I just removed it for right now and put it off to the side. Uh, but I've got the FIC injectors in there. Most likely gonna upgrade those. Uh, they're 1650s. And I'm most likely gonna have to go to 2,2100s of some sort, something uh, that can make a little bit more power. I wanna get over that 1,000 mark. These will be pushing it. I have to really bump up fuel pressure to make these work. And I don't like doing that because it makes the fuel pumps work harder. So I'm trying to get it to all work with this system. Having two Supras is definitely not cheap. I can tell you that much. Um, trying to get the engine done, trying to get this done, trying to do as many things as I possibly can. It's definitely draining on you. Um, I'm lucky that I have all these tools now I've acquired, got the shelf set up, I got all this stuff I've acquired over the years. I can always say this. I'm a big believer in buying your own tools if you like to rent, you like to work in your own cars because it gets really costly really fast if you're gonna pay another shop to do it. So having all the tools I have make it a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I've been very fortunate that I've collected all this over the years and my mentality has always been that like, it actually cost me the same or maybe slightly less to do it myself, but once I bought the tool, then I have it, and when I do it a second time, it doesn't cost me anything, right? Because I've had the tool already. And I'm really glad I did that, so now over the years, I already have it when I need to do something. Someone's like, ah, I can't do this. I'm like, oh, I actually bought it. It seemed expensive at the time, and seemed like, man, why would you do that? Why would you buy that? Because it's a one and done tool, but I've used it now four, five, six, seven times, and it's paid for itself. So it makes sense for me. So that's how I've always justified it, again, Every person's situation is different, but that's how I've ran it, and I'm glad I have done that. We're gonna have to make one little change to the adapter. As we've got the old cold keystone here in the way, we try to put it on the Bosch drive-by wire, and here's the thing you have to know about the 82 millimeter, 72, any of these Bosch drive-by wires, the bottom piece does not sit flush. So when you look at it here, see what sets off in the back, This the plastic area where the motor is and stuff, sits off. Right, so you can't have something that's perfectly flush. So I already talked to the gentleman who runs SMS. He's going to machine this back slightly so it fits that better and then change the bolt hole slightly too. The guy that runs SMS is super, super nice. So I'm glad that he, uh, he could do his own programming, running of the machines and everything. Um, makes my life a lot easier. 
Um, again, I wanted to show you guys this too, so you can see. Now these bolts are way too long. I'm using this from the MCC because I don't have anything at this time. Uh, I need to get some and I'll tell you guys the exact length. I think it's gonna be 70 millimeters is the exact length bolt you wanna use, but I wanna make sure that before I tell you guys that. Um, but I'm pretty stinking happy with all of it. Uh, again, 50 millimeters for the offsets. And then I'm gonna figure out the length of the bolts here so we can get this all titanium from dress up bolts and get it all set up. Changed my hat there, shirt and stuff, sorry. I'm doing some other things. So again, manifold's finished up. I'm just trying to figure out what to do to coat it. I have had people say like, hey, leave it raw. I kind of want to, but it would still need cleaned up, taken apart and cleaned up. But then we need coated because raw loom is a pain in the ass to keep after. That's why I went away from everything polished and went to powder coating and coating everything um, because it's just wipe it off and keep going. Especially when time is, I don't have all the time in the world now. Something that I can clean up really fast and move on is what I like. I like how durable powder coat is, but then it covers up all the prettiness of it. So, you know, the fact that it is billet is something I want to be shown off. So anodizing is an option, but anodizing turns color. So I don't like that. Uh, it's very durable, doesn't care about chemicals, but it does do this. It does, it will slightly turn colors and that's just how it is. I don't care what you get, they're all do it. Um, so Cerakote is something, but I don't think you can get a high gloss finish out of Cerakote from what I've been reading online. It won't be the same as like true gloss black that you can get from either paint or from powder coat. If I do powder coat, I can get exactly what I want. I have someone local that can do it, which is even better. I already know a guy that does a really high end quality job. I would never have to worry about anything, but again, it will cover up everything. So I'm like, what do I do? Like, I don't know, maybe do a clear, like maybe a clear powder. Is there a clear powder? I don't even know. Because what I was thinking is too, if I even coated it, I was gonna do the flange, the body here, um, and then the runner's black, and then I was gonna leave this flange here that it bolts to, I was gonna leave that machine so it like has like a separation and shows that off. I kinda like that fact. Uh, again, maybe some feedback there. So this flange, so there's the runners, then the runners bolt to this flange, and then these two halves, you can see here, they clamp together, and then this clamps onto that, right? There's all these different points. Um, so I'd like some feedback from you guys, but I think I'm gonna end the video on that again. Uh, I'm really, really happy with all this. As you can see, the injectors are in. Again, 50 millimeters is the length for that. Uh, the bolt length, I'm ordering two different bolts right now, 65, and I'm ordering a 70 millimeter length bolt um, and seeing which one works best because it is a blind hole, meaning it doesn't go the whole way through. So I need to see which one works best and I can get as much thread on as possible. The more thread I have, the better I feel. So I ordered both 65, I'm like, no will work, but I, I wanna see if I can get a 70 on there so I can get as much clamping force on it and don't have to worry about the thread stripping out. Um, you know, the more, more is better in that aspect. So, yeah. Again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Yasmin, thank you so much for this, dude. Uh, SMS CNC, thank you, but Yasmin, thank you. Like, this is way, again, above and beyond any person should ever do for me. This is, I can't thank you enough. There's nothing I can really do. I try to help you as much as I can with your super brother, but this is way above and beyond that, so I owe you a ton. So anytime you need anything, man, please, please contact me. I'll do whatever I can to help you. And guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Questions, concerns, anything, let me know down below in the comments. I'll try to answer the best I can. Thank you all very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.